Welcome back, folks, one and all, to Let's Play the Temple of Elemental Evil, where we last left off. Valcor and Ariel. A Ariel? Really? We're busy exploring this weird dungeony place. Let's go forward. Oh, look. You see another well, a ladder leading even deeper into the earth. The air coming from the well is heavy with moisture and the smell of rotting flesh. Bit okay. of a clue there. We're probably going to meet some zombies or something. Just as you step off the ladder, you see something in the next room. Even through the dim torchlight, you can make out three creatures with muscle and bone protruding from rotting holes in their skin. They are tearing furiously at a corpse in front of them. You have to wait for a creature in order to combat to begin. Ah yes, that is very true. Can we see these creatures? Now you see that zombie? We're gonna get the jump on him. Wizard 1. Magic wizard. Yes, I am now in spellcasting mode. Fire! The zombie is dead. You will wait. The other zombies don't even care. They're too busy chewing on yummy, yummy, not so yummy human flesh. Well, they think it's yummy. They're a bit weird, though. Magic missile, magic missile, magic missile, magic missile. Yep, and what do you know, the zombies, well, didn't notice. I mean, stupid, I've noticed. Zoom! And the zombies are dead. Pretty easy. Usually combat is not that gentle. What's this zombie have? The groaning and shuffling of a large group of zombies can be heard from the room ahead. The smell is almost unbearable, silhouetting the undead figures as a blazing red light coming from just beyond. Yes, sir. You found a wand of fireballs! Now, wand of fireballs can only really be used by her. Which is a bit sucky, really. But there you go. There are a lot of zombies in this next room. Trust me when I say a lot of zombies, not a good thing. You see all those zombies? We're gonna deal with them before they can deal with us. We're gonna go into our inventory. We're gonna say, grab this one. Uh, there's no room for this one, blah, blah, blah. Grab and use. You see that radius? That is a fireball, and this is how it works. Some of them succeeded on their saving throws, though. And here comes a zombie! <laughs> now take your fighter and rush in and finish them off! Uh, or I could just stand here. Okay. <laughs> Poke them! That did not work! At one. Oh no, she might die. This is terrible. Trust me, it's as not. you wish. Ha! Ha! Now we can move quite far. Okay. We can't oh, get close oh. enough to this zombie yet, though. Stay there. We'll just hack this one to bits. There we go. We're almost at the end of the tutorial, folks. A red glowiness beyond. Look at that! That must be a gem of unparalleled wealth! We're rich beyond our wildest dreams! You discovered a glowing red gem whose worth is beyond calculation. Many adventurers would kill to possess an item of such value. Looks like she's going to kill us. Well, that's the end of the tutorial. 
We'll never see that man again, or that woman. They are both dead to us. Now, we want a new game. We want a normal game. Choose your party's alignment. Alignment is important in this game. There are th nine alignments. Ranging from lawful, neutral, and chaotic, and good, neutral, and evil. If you select an alignment, you can only pick for alignments in your party, that alignment, and all alignments within one step on straight lines. This is so that you don't end up with teams that have lawful good paladins and chaotic evil baby-eating warlocks. Trust me, you don't want baby-eaters in a paladin party. My alignment for my group is going to be neutral good, which allows me to have true neutral, lawful good, chaotic neutral, and neutral good. You should accept. Now I have hidden the pre-generated characters, which are mostly characters that are in the version 3.5 and 3.0 books. We have Alexis, Barry, Harriet, and Timothy. Barry Coleman will be our fighter for now. Harriet will be our wizard, but I'm planning on restatting her up. Timothy will be our rogue for, for now. And Alexis is our druid. What we're going to do first is we're going to create our final party member. Rolling stats is it's gonna take a while, let me let me tell you that. You got forty you get four D sixes, you roll them, and you take the lowest number away, and that's the stat. You get numbers between three and eighteen. You get six of these, and in this game you get unlimited re-rolls. And let me tell you, I'm going to re-roll until I get something suitable enough for this character. This could take a while. But once I've actually done this, trust me, it won't take very long for us to actually make this character up. Hmm. That's decent. Not decent enough, though. I'm, I'm very picky. At least another 17. Especially for this character that I'm creating. Needs to be really good. Come on. Now, when we play in my D&D game, I, I, I'm in a long-standing D&D game, we only allowed two re-rolls of our stats. My DM would be tearing his hair out at how many times I'm re-rolling this. We're going to be making a paladin. Because we all like paladins. Especially the neutral good, neutral good party. He will be our frontline fighter of sorts. You will see when the party slowly evolves what plans I have for it. Come on. What I might do is I might um off screen rolling the rest of the stem. Not really that awesome. Might re off screen re rolling the stats for rest of the character. I just missed a really good set of stats there, I think. I probably did. That's how it goes. Usually I miss them. I've already re-rolled 155 times. Is anyone counting? You don't have to, because that tells you. Almost as if it's judging you and shaking its head slightly at you, going... It won't stop you, though. It literally says you can re-roll as many times as you like. Might as well just let you assign stats like in the really early D&D computer games. Come on! Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the game, and when we come back, we will um, have a decent set of stats. Until then, folks. Until then.